So today we're going to be looking at writing the equations and the lines of circles. At the top I just wanted to review the names of all the different types of lines that intersect a circle. From the unit, a line that intersects the circle twice, the circle's unit is called... The tangent line intersects, so this line here is the tangent line. The tangent line by definition intersects a circle at one point. The name of a line that intersects a circle in two points, no, but it does begin with an S, a secant. So we're going to write the equation of this line here in our notes today. So given that we're going to write an equation of a line, we need to know the slope of the line and a point that the line goes through. So we always need to know this point of tangency. And then we also need to know the slope. So how am I going to determine the slope of a line given a circle? And given the equation of a circle, we're given the center and the radius. So given the center and a radius, how am I going to determine the slope of the tangent line? The reciprocal? The negative reciprocal? That's right, but why do I look at the negative reciprocal, or what do I look at the negative reciprocal of what? The what of the radius? The slope of the radius. Because back in our unit, so let's draw the radius here to the point of tangency. The radius intersects the circ or intersects the tangent line at the point of tangency, and yes, the radius is perpendicular to the tangent line. So once we find the slope of the radius, we take the negative reciprocal, and now we have the slope of our line. So the question becomes, when it says to write the equation of the tangent line or lines, at most, how many tangent lines are you going to have to a circle with the same slope? So here's one line right now. If they have the same slope, how many more lines, or can we draw any more lines that are tangent to that circle? So intersect the circle at a point and have the same slope as the given line. So there's one more line. So only two lines, two tangent lines can be drawn to the circle with the same slope. So let's just sketch those in. If you have a straight edge, you can line up your ruler. So they intersect the circle at one point and they're parallel because they have the same slope. So intersecting the circle at one point and parallel to that line. So to write the equation of a line tangent to a circle, given the point of tangency, bless you, so let's take a look at the first example. Write the equation of a line that's tangent to this circle, x squared plus y squared, so we have the center at the origin. And it's going to intersect the circle at point 3, 4. So 3, 4 right here. So given the point of tangency, I need to write the equation of the line that would be tangent and go through that point. The first step we need to do is find the slope of the radius. We can take the negative reciprocal. So find the slope of the radius that's drawn to the point of tangency. So what is the slope of this radius? Second thing is since the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius, the slope of the tangent line is the negative reciprocal. Okay, of the slope of your radius. Then, we have obviously a point on the line, the point of tangency. We now have the slope of the line, so then we're going to substitute the slope of the tangent line and the point of tangency into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, which is the equation of a line just in point-slope form. So step number one, let's calculate the slope of the radius. So 
it goes through 0, 0. This is the point 3, 4. So change of y over change of x is going to be 4 minus 0, 3 minus 0, which is 4 thirds. And you can double check from the center that you go up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3. So now if the slope of the radius is 4 thirds, what's going to be the slope of my tangent line? If, if I sketch it, they must be, well that's a bad sketch, perpendicular, the negative reciprocal. So we can actually draw the line in once we have the equation. So the slope of the tangent line is going to be negative 3 fourths. So go down 1, one 2, 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Or go up 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can draw in your line. Solving an algebraically, okay, does it look like it crosses at 6 or just above 6? So our y-intercept, we think it's 6, well let's verify what it is by plugging in our slope, uh, so this is our m, and then our point is going to be 3, 4. So in y minus y1, we do m times x minus x1. So here's your x1, y1. So it's y minus 4 equals m times x minus x1. I always distribute and then show the addition of 4. So we get negative 3 fourths x plus, because negative times negative, 3 fourths times 3. 3 fourths times 3 over 1. 9 fourths. So when I want to add over the 4, right, if I want it to be a number that has a common denominator so I can combine my two fractions, what's the numerator if I want to divide by 4 to get this 4? 16. So that's the way I do it. I don't use the calculator at all. So now I just need to simplify and add these two fractions and my answer it's going to be y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 25 fourths. So it doesn't intersect at 6. And by my picture, I know I did it up here at the Promethean, but it does look like it's just above the 6. Example number 2. So given the tangent line in the equation of the circle, this is not drawn to scale, but we're finding the point of tangency. So let's draw a picture. Here's a circle. Here's a tangent line. And this is not drawn to scale. How do I find that point of tangency? The point of tangency is the point of intersection of these two graphs. So I want to pause uh, for a moment with this example. Say it wasn't an equ uh, a line in a circle, but say it was either a parabola and a line or two lines. So how would you find the points of intersection? So in solving a system of any type um, of equation, or uh, whether it be quadratic, absolute value, circular, two linear, you solve this is a system by the elimination method or substitution method. In this case, I can't line up my x term, y term, and then get uh, the same coefficient by multiplying and then cancel them out, so I'd want to use substitution. So take a look while I erase. What are we going to substitute in in one equation from the other equation? We're given y equals so you want to take this expression for y and substitute it over here for this y. So what this is really saying is 1 third x plus 1 plus 1. 
because it had the plus one there. So what does that simplify to? One third x plus one plus one is one third x plus two. So that's what this becomes is that right there. So we're going to expand and multiply. So x minus 4 squared means x minus 4 times x minus 4 plus 1 third x plus 2 times 1 third x plus 2 equals 10. Now we need to distribute. This might be easier, this product, because we just got done looking at perfect squared trinomials. So this is going to be x times x, x squared. The middle is the double, and the last is the product, or the square. So this is x squared minus 8x plus 16. Might be a little bit more challenging on the next product, so we can do that together. What's one third x times one third x? One ninth x squared. Now outside, what's one third times two? So two thirds. The next two products are going to be the same. Two thirds and two thirds, right? So two thirds and two thirds is four thirds x, because they have the x attached. And then two times two is? 4 equals 10. So I have this equation, which has some fractions, but I want to get rid of the fractions. So I want to clear the denominators. So there's no more denominator, it's just a whole number. How do we clear the denominator? Multiply the whole thing by what number? 3 wouldn't cancel out the 9, though. Okay, and 9. 9 times 1 ninth is... Nope, 1. So multiply the whole thing by 9. So we have 9x squared. 9 times 8 is 72. 16 times 9? 9 times 6 is 54. Carry the 5. 9 times 1 is 9, plus the 5 is 14. So then 144, and then yes, 1 ninth. And you can look at that, it, and if you cross this out, be careful. When you multiply, this is the same as 9 over 1, so you can do some cross-canceling here because it goes from top to bottom in the numerator and denominator. So this becomes x squared, but just make sure, you know, just, you know, or don't cancel it out for the rest of the products. So this is plus 1x squared. 3 times 3 is 9, and then 3 times 4 is 12x. 9 times 4 is... 36 equals 90. Don't forget to multiply. Now combine all your like terms and let's bring this over for 0. So 9x squared and x squared is 10x squared. I just cross them out as I add them. Negative 72 plus 12. Yep. And let's, act, let's act, um, actually bring that over as negative 90 and 0. So when you combine all the constants are numbers. 144 plus 36 minus 90 is, what is it? 90? Yeah. Yep. So now we have one equation with just x, which we had a factor. Is there a greatest common factor for 10, 60, 90? Factor out the 10, and you're left with x squared minus 6x plus 9, which is a perfect square trinomial. This is, this is the double, that's the triple of what number? 3. So negative 3, negative 3 doubles to negative 6. The square is 9. So you can continue to bring down that, but we're only looking at those factors with x in them to determine the root. So x equals... 3. You don't write the 3 twice, it's a double root. So if x is 3, how do I find the y value that goes with that x value? Plug it in. Does it make sense to plug it, or which is easier, to plug into the linear or circle? 
the linear equation. So y is equal to 1 third times 3 plus 1. A third of 3 is 1, and then 1 plus 1 is So the answer is 3, 2. So at number 3, we're going to look at number 3 twice. One, graphically, so it says the use of the grid is optional, so we're going to take out optional. We're actually going to use the grid. And then it's not going to take us, we don't have as much writing for 3 in the last one, because once we get to a certain point, you solve it exactly the same. So let's draw the circle. So center, 3, 5. So given this equation, we have a center, 3, 5, and what's the radius? 2 radical 5, yes, because it is radical 20. Now, in graphing the circle, so, so far you've been given a radius that was a perfect square. Um, or those, actually you haven't, I take that back. But you haven't had to graph one that didn't have a whole number for the radius. Approximately, what is the square root of 20 equal to? Because you can still graph it, 4 and a half. So you're going to go out, and if you're using your compass, you really only need to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half, 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half, with two in two directions, because then you could just use your, you only need to go up 1, actually. But you can do 2 just to make sure your compass goes through both those points. So in using the tool, Now, we're finding the equation of two tangent lines, okay? So, line number one and line number two. It says they both have a slope of negative one, two. I just need now the point. Find the equation of two tangent lines to a circle that each have a slope of negative one-half, but I need to know where they intersect the circle. So if the slope of the tangent line is negative one-half, I also know the slope of the radius because they are negative reciprocals. So the slope of the radius is what? Two over one or just two. So using the grid, from here, my slope is up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Let's see how good you did in drawing your circle. Do you have it intersect right at the corner of your box? What are the coordinates of this point? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, nine. To get the other point of tangency, so one point is going to be 5, 9, and the other point is going to be down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, 1, 1. Now, once we plug them in, we're done, but you should do a check or a verification that those points, especially in this case, that they are on the circle. So if I substitute here is... 5 minus 3 squared plus um, 9 minus 5 squared, does that equal 20? Well, 5 minus 3 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. 9 minus 5 is 4, 4 squared is 16, and that does equal 20. So just to verify or show that it is on the circle, and then to check to make sure 1, 1's on the circle, is 1 minus 3 squared plus 1 minus 5 squared, does that equal 20? This is negative 2 squared, but negative 2 squared is also 4. 1 minus 5 is negative 4 squared uh, is 16, which equals 20. So I know those points are on there for sure. Because the radius was not 
um, a whole number, it's good to verify those points. Now we just need to do the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 for each of those two lines. So y minus 9 equals m times x minus 5. y minus 1 equals m times x minus 1. So this is negative 1 half x plus 5 over 2. And then what fraction do I add that's equivalent to 9? That has a common denominator of 2. 18 over 2. So this is, final answer, negative 1 half x plus 5 plus 18, 23 over 2. This one is negative 1 half x plus 1 half plus 1 in the form of 2 over 2. So final answer is y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 over 2. Now if you're watching the video I want you to pause it to sketch the picture again and this is the same type of example but we don't have a grid so what would be the algebra that we show you guys I want you to partner up with someone next to you to discuss the last example so to do this um, do this question here we need to solve a system because we're looking at the points of intersection as that's the only thing that's missing for writing each equation on the line so we're going to write the equation of Let's do it in orange or red. This line, okay, but without using, okay, the straight edge first, my center is supposed to be here. So the diameter goes through the center. So I'm going to write the equation for the diameter, which contains the point 3, 5, and also has the slope of what? What's the slope of this line right here? Because it's perpendicular to the tangent line, and the tangent line has a slope of negative 1 over 2, take the negative reciprocal, it's 2 over 1, or just 2. So we first start, I'm going to number the steps in order, and we write the equation for the radius, or the diameter, as they're the same line. So the equation for the radius is going to be using the point 3, 5 and slope of 2, y minus 5 equals m times x minus x1. So we get 2x minus 6 plus the 5. Equation for the radius is going to be 2x minus 1. Now we do it the same way as we did number 2. We're going to take and substitute this for y within the circle. So if I do that, this is really 2x minus 1 minus 5, and it's easier because there's no fractions. So 2x minus 1 minus 5 is really 2x minus 6, negative 1 minus 5. So step 2, we're going to use substitution. It's going to be what times what? Up to the equation. x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9, plus the 2x minus 6 times 2x minus 6. Equals 20. So now, as I just said, x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 2x times 2x. 4x squared outside is negative 2x, in, or 12x rather, because 2 times 6, 6 times 2. So negative 12 and negative 12 is negative 24 plus 36. And then I'm actually going to move the 20 over. Do we have to multiply by a number here? Do we have any denominators to clear? No, so we can leave it. 4x squared and x squared is 5x squared. Negative 24x and negative 6x is a negative 
30x. 36 minus 20 is 16, and 16 plus 9 is... They all have a greatest common factor, every one of those terms, a 5. So it's 5 times x squared minus 6x plus 5. Factors, x times x, what are the factors of a positive 5 that combine to a negative 6? 5 being prime makes it pretty easy. It's only going to be 5 and 1, negative 5, negative 1, as this is the sum and product. So the roots are x equals 5 and x equals 1. Well, they didn't turn out to be the same. And that's because there's two different tangent lines. So one of the tangent lines is five, or the t points of tangency rather, is five something. The other one is one something. So do you want to plug the five and the one into the linear equation right here to find the y value that goes with x? Or you want to plug it in the circle? Let's plug it into the linear. So two times five, minus 1, and then 2 times 1 minus 1. So y equals 2 times 5 minus 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. On the other page, did we have one of the points of intersection is 5, 9? So this is the same question. If we go back to here, Here's the one point of intersection. We found graphically, now we just found algebraically. The other point, 2 times 1 minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so that's the point 1, 1, which we have here. Now, from there, we just need to do this, which we already did. So we're not going to do it, okay? No, because we just did it on this page. But you would take for each line using um, 5, 9, and 1, 1, do your y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. But we can just make a note, as this is our um, note page, C number three on previous page. And you can take a highlighter or just box that this part here is the step you would need to add.